Nasal fractures are the most common fractures of the face. They appear often in the ENT clinic. Some of these fractures occur in sports activities, especially contact sports. Fights also account for many nasal fractures. However, many fractures are the result of disharmony in the home. Spouses often use physical violence in pursuing or settling marital disputes. These common garden variety nasal fractures are usually reduced by the physician in the ENT clinic. They do not have to be reduced immediately if there are no complications. Reduction can wait for two days or three days at maximum. In most clinics, you will be the first person to see the patient, except for the receptionist. Your first job will be to obtain a medical history. If your patient does not already have x-rays, request that they be made. You should arrange for the patient to hand carry them back to the clinic. If at all possible, you should obtain a picture of the patient for the physician's use, in order that he may see the appearance of the nose prior to the injury. The patient's ID card is recommended. Your next job will be to drape the patient. You must be sure that all of the equipment is ready for the procedure. Although highly experienced technicians sometimes reduce nasal fractures under extreme conditions, say aboard a ship with no MD, your job will usually be to assist the physician. The typical simple nasal fracture involves a lateral displacement of the nasal bones and possible displacement of the septum. There are five steps in the treatment procedure. An examination, administration of an anesthetic, reduction of the fracture, control of hemorrhaging if necessary, and provision of support if necessary. The physician will use a nasal speculum in examining the patient. External palpation of the nose is also a routine part of the examination. He may also use a suction tip to remove mucus and any blood clots within the nasal vault. Removal of blood clots will often stop residual bleeding. On occasion, it may be necessary for you to remove the clots. The first step in preparation for anesthesia may be to spray a 1 4th percent neosinephrine solution into the patient's nose. This shrinks the mucous membranes, which reduces bleeding, makes it easier for the physician to see the inside of the nasal vault and slows the absorption of the anesthetic. The anesthetic, cocaine, might first be sprayed into each nasal vault. Cocaine is prepared in two, four, and five percent solutions. These solutions can be color-coded with food dye by the pharmacist. In this example, the 2% is yellow, 4% is blue, and 5% is pink for easy identification. Whenever cocaine is used, both oxygen and an anaphylactic tray must be available in the immediate area. Then the physician will probably use a bayonet forceps to apply cotton plungelets soaked in cocaine solution to the inside of the nose.
Three such applications on each side should contact all of the important areas. Some physicians may choose instead to inject an anesthetic such as lidocaine. You must be prepared to assist your medical officer as efficiently and smoothly as possible. You should be able to anticipate his needs. The typical reduction procedure requires a nasal elevator. And possibly a pair of septal forceps. The physician will first measure the distance to the point of deformity on the outside of the nose. Then he will place the elevator in the nostril to the point of deformity and raise the concave nasal bones. At the same time, he will push on the convex side of the nose on the outside. If the septum is dislocated along the nasal crest, it will usually be snapped into place with the nasal elevator. If this is not effective, the septal forceps may be used to reseat the septum. Sometimes the dislocated septum will not have been caused by the recent trauma, but by an older one so that it is not possible to reduce it without a planned surgical procedure in the operating room. After the fracture is reduced, it may be necessary to control bleeding. Either you or the physician may do this job. If the fracture is badly fragmented and internal support is required, the physician will most likely want to do the packing. Lengths of half-inch wide Vaseline impregnated gauze strip are slowly and gently packed into the nose. Usually they will remain only for an hour or so and be removed before the patient is sent home. The physician may choose to control bleeding with the application of cotton fledglets impregnated with neosinephrine or cocaine or both. If cocaine is used, the physician will apply it. Usually, there will be no internal packing. External support is seldom required. The patient will simply be warned to be careful and not to sneeze hard or blow his nose for a few days. He should be advised to avoid strenuous activity for a day or so. A single strip of tape is often applied to act as a sign so that others will know there is something wrong with the patient's nose. If the physician does want external support, he might use an aluminum splint. Either of you might apply the splint. It will both support and protect the nose. It will also act as a signal to others. Tape in multiple strips is occasionally used for support, and on rare instances, plaster is used. A simple, uncomplicated fracture will usually not be splinted or packed. Tell your patient to minimize the effect of sneezes by emptying his lungs of air before sneezing. If there is a nasal pack, instruct your patient to hold in the pack when a sneeze cannot be avoided. Tell your patient to be especially careful not to re-injure his nose during the healing period.